All right, guys, I'm going to show you the iCommand app. I'm actually using the Android app. So when you first start the iCommand app, it will come up with a screen where you'll put in your information to make a new user account. You'll put in you know, your name, email address, um, and all that stuff, password, and make an account. I've already done that. Um, I've already set up my iCommand too, but I'm going to go ahead and show you this little screen. This is what it'll come up with after you make your account to tell you how to set it up. Uh, you'll plug in the I command. You'll press in that little button on the side for eight seconds and release. You'll see the lights flash like they say. Then you'll go to your phone's Wi-Fi network settings and you'll, you'll pick the actual I command network that it creates. The I command unit itself will create its own little Wi-Fi network that, you, that you're going to connect to, not your home Wi-Fi network right now. After you do that, then you come in here, put in the Wi-Fi name and password for your home network. And remember, it has to be a 2.4 gigahertz network, not a 5 gigahertz network. So make, if your router has, uh, you know, both or whatever, make sure you're putting in the info for the 2.4 gigahertz. Then you'll click connect and it'll go through its little connecting process and then it'll, it'll tell you when it's connected and set up. Like I said, I've already done that, so mine's already ready to rock. I already used it uh, last night for the first time. So this is the home screen. This is what you'll see when you first open up the app after everything's set up or when you open up the app again. Um, you'll see, you know, the recipes here. This will show your, your recent cooks. Um, it, it'll actually, you know, save your cooks. And they got the, you know, the blog and all these other things on here. Um, so you can click this cook now button or fire it up button if you're wanting to actually do a cook or, uh, or get your grill up to temp or whatever. Um, or you can come up here to barbecue. This is what you'll pick if you're doing, you know, a, any sort of barbecue cook, something longer or slower, you know, in the, if you're doing smoking something, if you're baking or roasting something, any, any of that, it comes with, uh, some presets here that you can pick or you can skip them and just put in your own manual numbers. So say you want, you, you just wanted to put in your own pit temperature, you know, 275 or say you wanted to do 350 or something, then you can just go ahead and start the I command. You can add a food. and go through that process. We'll go ahead and delete that entry since it was just a little test thing. Um, going to cook now just brings you to that same barbecue menu. Um, instead of skipping the meat, like you could, you could go to a meat. Say we're gonna do ribs ask you for how much ribs you're going to do. Let's just say we're going to do 10 pounds. It'll automatically put the pit temperature at 225 and the food at 190 as a suggestion, but you can change that by clicking the number. Say you wanted to cook your ribs at 275 instead. You could do that. And if you wanted them at, I don't know, 195 instead of 190 or something, you could do that. And then you just hit cook. You, the, the unit comes with two probes. One is a little more rounded end probe with a little clip um, or a little, it's like a little grill clip thing that you, that you slide the, the probe into for the, uh, for the grill temperature, for the grate temperature, the pit temperature. And then it comes with a little sharp meat probe. There are three slots for meat probes. Um, so you can choose which slot you plugged it into or if you have multiple meat probes, you know, you can actually do like three different meats at three different temperatures or whatever if you wanted to, but we just have one and we have it plugged into the, the first slot. So we'll just put in probe one, start I command. The fan kicks on or anything. Uh, you'll see the ribs where it says 72 degrees and that little thermometer thing. Um, that's the meat temperature from that the, that the meat probe is reading up here in the top in the middle is the what the pit probe is reading which is 70 degrees because it's sitting on the counter and they're both sitting on the counter in my house right now 275 down below it is is the pit temperature we have set 
which you can edit again if you wanted to, you know, go ahead and be like, oh, well, you know, I decided I want to change that to 250 or, or maybe you want to like, you know, cook it at 250 for two hours and then bring it up to 300 for two hours or anything like that. You know, you can actually change it mid cook if you'd like up in the top right where it says pit probe and then fan below that a hundred percent that, you know, that's the, that's the percentage that the fan is running at right now. Um, of course I just started it up and it's in on my counter. It's, it's at a hundred percent right now, which would be to, you know, initially stoke the fire. If you wanted to add another food, if you had another, if you had another, uh, probe, you could click add food here. Say you were going to do some sort of beef. Um, of five pounds and you wanted it cooked to whatever 140 and say you had that on probe 2 then you click add food it'll probably come up with an alert to tell me that the probe is not working there you go at the top probes not properly plugged in because we don't have a probe on probe two of course we're going to go ahead and start this cook. and you can see it comes up with a probe error here too please check your probe is properly connected which it's not and this will this will show the the, the cook here that i just did as a demonstration um, and we'll go ahead and delete this entry. I'll show you the, this was the, the entry for the, the pork I did. Um, it actually lets you go ahead and, and rate it with stars if you want. Um, and you can, you can name it. Uh, let's, you could say rib. Oops. Ribs. And the date or something if you wanted to or you know say you did like uh some special seasoning or something you, to, you can name it whatever you like um this shows the start time and finish time of the cook i did the top graph is the pit temperature the bottom graph is the meat temperature and of course you can you can delete the entry below that if you want so we'll go back uh like I said, the barbecue was how you do any sort of, you know, smoking, roasting, cooking, or whatever. If you just want to grill at high temperature and you're not um, actually uh, going to monitor food and temperature and all that stuff, you're just wanting to, to get it up to higher heat, you go to grill. It gives you recommended times down here for what temperature you're shooting for. Um, and there's a slider here. You can change the time anywhere from 30 seconds to 30 minutes. So uh, say we wanted to do uh, the recommendation of 20 minutes. And this is just how long the fan runs at full speed for. Um, you just set that and it basically just comes up with a timer that counts down and runs the fan at full speed for that long, just to get a lot of air in there, uh, get those coals going, get it up to 10. <laughs> we did that and then it comes up with alert grill complete it'll send you alerts if you have alerts enabled uh, little push alerts it'll tell you if the unit is um, disconnected from Wi-Fi or anything if, it, if the connection goes out or if, and when it reconnects it'll tell you when the when the food is close to done when the food is done when your uh, pit temperature is up to temperature at first when you first set it um, things like that uh, See, we'll go back to the home screen here. They also have recipes. Um, this is kind of handy. We'll go to see all. Uh, here in the recipes, you'll see a, a bunch of these different recipes listed. And just keep loading more. Now, say um, say you want to do these. Say you wanted to do these barbecue bacon burn ins or whatever it already has the pit temperature the cook time and the food temperature set 
in there for this recipe. You can put in how many you're serving um, and it will change the ingredients for the appropriate amount you're shooting for, as you can see there, which is, which is pretty slick. Um, then it has your instructions. So basically you, if you wanted to follow one of these recipes, you put in how many people you were going to be eating. It'll give you the, the numbers. You just buy that much ingredients. And then when you're ready, hit cook now, it'll automatically set all those things, the, the temperature for the, the meat, the grill, and then you just start it up. And it already has it labeled bacon burn ends. All your settings, good to go. We'll go ahead and stop that. And we'll delete that entry just because that was an example. All right, that's most of the meat of the app. Um, one more thing, if you go up to the top right where you have the little picture, that is your profile. You can change your information here. Um, you can go to manage devices. That is the I command that I'm connected to right now. Uh, you can see, you can, you can change the Wi-Fi info. This was how I got to the menu where I, that I showed you guys in the beginning. You can go back there if you wanted to actually change your Wi-Fi settings or anything. Um, now, right now you can see where it says the, the version over in the, in the right side, 1.0.43. That's the firmware version for the I command itself. Um, when I first got it, it was 1.0.3 something. And there was a little update button on this screen. <laughs> and if you press that, it'll actually go through the uh, update process and download and update new firmware to the I command, which I've already done. So the update button isn't there anymore. But for you guys just getting one, um, one of the first things you may want to do is come into this menu and just go ahead and update the firmware. And then the plus sign up here in the top right, um, you can add another device if you wanted to, if you say you had multiple ones you were controlling or wanted to switch devices or anything, I guess. Um, settings here, you can change from uh, pounds to kilograms, Fahrenheit to Celsius. Um, you can turn on and off push notifications and text notifications. Push notifications are the notifications that just pop up on your phone system. And text notifications are, of course, text messages that you actually get with alerts. And you can change your password, log out. If you wanted to change your account, delete your account, whatever like that. Um, if you go to the FAQ here, they actually have a, what seems to be fairly extensive little uh, FAQ, frequently asked questions on you know, getting started, um, how to use the app and update, troubleshooting, how to connect to the internet, um, you know, what the different lights mean, if you're having any trouble with stuff. There's... Uh, all kinds of little articles and things here you can check out. Um, support is another way to get to the FAQ about terms of service, privacy, or, or contact uh, Kamado Joe if you want to actually contact their support about something. <clears throat> that just brings you to the, the Kamado Joe support page on their website. And that's it. Um, if you guys have any questions or anything like that, uh, let me know. Hope this was somewhat helpful. Thanks.